everyone, my name is Courtney and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a review of Winter's Orbit by Everina Maxwell. So for those of you who haven't heard the premise of this, this is an adult sci-fi with a strong focus on a romantic plot. The way that this book is pitched is that one of our main characters, Kiem, who's kind of this disappointment of a prince, gets roped into the politics of his planet when he's kind of forced into a marriage with another man named Janin. It's pronounced Jainin in the audio book, but I just, it sounds too much like vagina, so I'm going to call him Janin. That's how I read it in my head when I was reading this book physically. Janin and Kiem are getting forced to get married together so they can fulfill this interplanet treaty sort of situation, but of course the treaty is not going as planned and it's a lot more complicated than all of that. So this book is kind of pitched as like a forced marriage rom-com in space with a heavy undertone of court politics, or at least that's how I got pitched the book, but to be honest, while I think a lot of those elements are in the story, I don't think that's really where the plot ended up going. I ended up giving us a 3.75 stars, which is a lot lower than most people's ratings. Most people have been loving this, giving it fives and fours. And so I kind of want to talk about, you know, going into this book, what my perception of the plot was going to be versus what it ended up actually being. I think a lot of my disappointment came from the fact that I thought I was going into this book knowing exactly what it was going to be, and it ended up diverging from what I thought it was going to be. As I settled into what the book actually was, I was able to kind of put my disappointment aside and look at the book more critically. But I do want to talk about how this book was pitched versus how the book unfolds just so that other people are aware. Do you think people will enjoy the book more if you know what it is versus what it sounds like on a first glance? So going into this book, I thought it was going to be a very heavy romance between these two main characters. I mostly thought it was going to be romantic comedy tropes, but set in space with a political backdrop, kind of forcing and pushing these two characters together. I was really excited for like the forced marriage, one bed situation that this book kind of promised to me in the beginning. And while those elements are all there, it isn't really indulgent in the same way that a romance book was and that I thought this book was going to be. The first 75 pages of this book, I was absolutely in love with it. It had a lot of those kind of cute romantic tropes, but there was a lot of heartbreak as well. One of the big trigger warnings or content warnings for this book is that Janin is getting out of a toxic romantic relationship. His partner has just died and he's still in that mindset of thinking, not necessarily that his partner is the best person in the world, but he is kind of in that toxic mindset of being manipulated by his partner. And that's kind of sunken into the surface of his perspective. So you can kind of see his harmful thinkings, but it's not really commented on. Jinin doesn't notice or understand his toxic behavior, but it made for just a really heartbreaking but also very cute setup because these two characters are misunderstanding each other in a very compelling way. To me, it's compelling because they just think differently. They're just two different people who see the world very differently, and when they come together, they're not hearing what the other person is saying in the way that it was meant to be said. And for me, that's just so interesting. I love that kind of dynamic of seeing two characters who just don't understand one another slowly develop a relationship and slowly begin to understand what the other person is saying and to connect. But the other big thing about this book is that I thought it was going to be a really heavy space romance with the space political stuff kind of at the back of our minds. I thought it would come into conflict with the two main characters, but I didn't think it was going to be a really heavy plot point, to be honest. And that's why I was kind of surprised because this book to me feels much more like an adventure sci-fi book with a heavy romance aspect at its core, but definitely the plot stuff is very important to the novel. And that's not saying that I don't expect it to be or I don't want it to be. Of course I want the plot to make sense and be well done and to be a big aspect of the novel, but it just it didn't happen in the way I thought it was. So when we start off the book, we find out that Janin's partner has died in an accident, but it might not actually be an accident and there's kind of a discovery mystery around that. But we also get introduced to a lot of other stuff. There is this political treaty and there's also turmoil on Janin's home planet and there's just a lot of disarray in this galactic system or this seven planet system. I don't know how many planets. And so for me, as we learned all these details, I instantly thought it was going to be like a press tour of sorts. Janin doesn't get along with like a lot of the dysenteries of his home planet. He's not really connected to them. They don't really trust him anymore. There's a lot of just like political strife on his planet. And so I was expecting for the whole big thing was that they were going to go to his home planet and kind of do like a press 
press tour to try and show that these two falling in love with each other and becoming married to try and smooth over that turmoil and conflict. That didn't happen at all. They didn't go to that planet. And so while the treaty stuff is important, while the turmoil of this planet is important, it was much more about the mystery of Tam, his accident, and the ship he was running, which was like interconnected with Janin's abusive relationship. And so it ended up being a lot more about solving this mystery, getting into almost kind of stumbling into the right situations actually when I think about it. And then from there kind of unraveling the mystery of what happened to Tam, what happened on the ship he was running, how was Janin involved? And so by the end of the book it was like almost this spy action adventure mystery novel which was not what I was expecting going into this. I thought it was going to be more of a slow court politics situation where we were supposed to care about all these different planets and their cultures and how they interconnected. While that stuff was there honestly didn't get explained in a very compelling or understandable way. A lot of the background details for me were just like very hard to follow. While the main plot of like Tam and his ship was very easy to follow, there was just a lot of other background details. I didn't know what was going on. I don't feel like it was well explained. And so it wasn't just like my disappointment at this becoming more of an action type novel. It was also those elements weren't really set up well. 100, 200 pages into the novel, I was really surprised that it was taking a turn into that. And also I didn't feel like I picked up the right details from the setup to really see it going in that way but also understand everything as it went in that direction. So for me reading this book it was like all the elements were there. There were so many good character arcs and character moments. I think the concept behind Janin and Kim's relationship and their own personal internal struggles is very strong but just the way that it was set up on the page I personally just didn't think it was super well done. Janin doesn't really realize his toxic behavior until very late into the book. Kim, the other main character, doesn't really realize his partner's toxic behavior either and it's kind of just pinned on them misunderstanding each other and thinking that the other one hates them and while I really love that trope I don't think it was super successful in this just because of how it was paced. It just took too long for them to get to a friendship moment and the friendship moment just like it happened just too soon too quickly and the turnaround from friendship into romance to me just wasn't what I wanted. I think this book was trying to go for a really good slow burn but just the logistics of the steps to slowly understanding one another just wasn't there. And for me that's what made like the middle chunk of this book very slow paced because I was expecting a slow unravel of these two characters as they finally finally began to connect. Jaynin's toxic relationship I was a big point of the novel. It was something he was struggling with but because it remained very sunken into his subconscious it didn't really become like this big character moment until the very end of the novel when it was finally like really explained where we were really starting to see a set line between his toxic behavior and what he was thinking now. I don't want to argue about the validity of the arc that Janin goes through. I think it's very accurate to somebody dealing and getting out of a manipulative and toxic abusive relationship but I do want to talk about it from a structural story standpoint where we're so close to Janin's perspective that we can't really always see the difference between what he's thinking and what we're supposed to know is wrong about his thinking, especially because Kiam takes a very long time and so does Belle and some of the other side characters. They take a really long time to notice his toxic behavior as well. I know that people in these situations can, you know, it's hard to pick up the signs of that. People don't always see it. They don't always see it in themselves a lot of the times, but that doesn't mean that from a story standpoint it worked necessarily. It was hard to tell that Janna was thinking in an abusive and toxic way at some points just because we were very very close to his narration. Because of their arcs not feeling fleshed out and complete, because of them just not having like a good argument and a fight, honestly, they did have lots of fights but it just wasn't in the way that really drove them together to understand one another. Because of the plot setup and because of the way the story unraveled, the middle of the book was just such a slog. I had such a hard time reading it which was why I got the audiobook for like the last hundred pages because I could not for the life of me finish this. But I didn't give this a bad review. I was loving it. I still really enjoyed it. There was a lot of stuff in here that I honestly loved so much. I want to see more books from this author. I want to see 
more books like this and a lot of people are enjoying this everybody's enjoying this from what I've seen of reviews on booktube at least I haven't seen any negative reviews of this and so I want to understand like why people love it so much why they connect to it and I think it has to do with the characters because that's where my heart lay as well I really loved all the characters that we got including the side characters Janet and Kim were just such great interesting fun characters they reminded me of one of my favorite OTPs from a show I used to watch and so they were just really comforting in that way you know you have the bubbly sunshine personality versus like the grumpy more reserved personality but just one of my favorite archetypes for romantic interests but they weren't one noted either seeing them struggle and develop and kind of prove what people think about them wrong was really really fun I also really liked the side character Belle there was a great non-binary character that I liked as well there was so much in here it just didn't fulfill what I was hoping for it just I wanted more of the romance I wanted more of this court intrigue I wanted to know more about the planets I think that's where my biggest complaint was is because I loved everything so much I loved the world I loved the characters I just wanted more of it and I wanted it to be more satisfying I did end up giving this a fairly high review and I think a lot of people have been enjoying this and are going to continue enjoying this this is queer it's set in space it's a romance and it's got a fun cast of characters with a fun adventure mystery plotline I think a lot of people are going to really really enjoy this and love this. While it wasn't the perfect book for me, I think it's going to be the perfect book for a lot of people and I hope kind of explaining what I thought going into this book and then explaining what you know halfway through what I thought this book was going to be and then kind of what this book ended up actually being, I hope that explanation helps you and if you pick this book up tell me what you thought about it. If you've read this book already I would love to know your opinions and thoughts about it. But yeah thank you so much for watching this review. I'll see you guys later and happy reading.